All right, today we have an Hublot for a tabletop review. This is actually not my watch. This is my brother's watch, which he lent me because he's not using it. So I was thinking maybe I'll just play around with it, get some dimensions, um, give my thoughts in it. I've been wearing it for on and off because I don't really want to wear it outside because you know it's not really my watch. So it's just like I've been wearing it at the house mostly. And at least I can give you some insights of the watch if ever you would be interested in purchasing one. And just before starting, customary wrist check. Today I'm wearing my IWC 3430. So the box is pretty nice. Um, it still follows that pattern of that Hublot uh, with a porthole thing because uh, I believe Hublot means porthole in French. Now, um, inside the box, of course, you get the watch. Um, you guys would see it actually came first with a blue leather strap. This is the factory one. And then I changed it to a factory rubber strap as well because I think it's much more sportier. I mean, if you're trying to homage an RM, you might as well go all the way, right? Because technically it is, or from afar, it is an RM. So aside from the watch, from the box you get this thing where you just I guess where you can put the watch and then a congratulations because of course you need validation for your expensive purchase and I think that's a warranty card and of course the manual there so as you guys would see this is I think the watch is like two years old already so the box has been pretty worn down but again, what's really important is the watch. Okay, so spot on 43 across the case. We have 52 from lug to lug. I'll give two measurements here. And if you guys would see, uh, underneath the case there's a curvature, so it fits your wrist really, really well. And that's a 43.8. And an overall thickness of 14.2. Bracelet is integrated and starts at 24.5. Tapers all the way, not by much, to 21. With the total weight in this applied rubber strap of 121 grams. So this whole case is made out of ceramic, which is actually microblasted. So from afar, when I first saw this, I thought it was actually forged carbon, but which in turn is actually ceramic. Even this black but uh, this bezel is actually a ceramic bezel, bezel as well. All the screws that you would see would be from titanium. Even the pushers and the crown would be from a polished titanium. And then I believe this is a blue composite resin center case. So all applied indices, all filled with loom. Actually, the loom is good. I'll try to sneak in a loom shot later. Um, chronograph found and then the three sub registers with a date at the 430 now on the right side that would be a 30 minute register on the six o'clock side this would be the 12 hour sub dial counter and then a small seconds running on the nine your hublot is printed out of the 12 and then swiss made at the very bottom and then you guys would see it has this very beautiful, I don't know if it's showing, skeletonized date wheel. So you guys would see the date wheel there and then it pops up every four at the 430 position. So the detail on this, it's, it's such a shame though because I don't have macro lens because I'm just shooting from an iPhone. But, but the detail that they did with this dial or lack of thereof is fairly brilliant and it, so the movement is based on the zenith el primero movement that beats at 36,600 vph composed out of 278 parts and contains 31 joules it has an approximate power reserve of 50 hours and water resistant to 100 meters or 330 feet so as you guys would know as well um zenith uh, hublot is all owned by the parent company uh, share the same parent company which is lvmh so just going back to the dial we activate the chronograph now 
very nice sweep. And then we stop and then reset. So it's a very, very nice movement. As I said, again, it's a Zenith one. And then of course it's a screwed on crown. It actually winds really nice. I don't know if this will pick up. And then from there on, you can just like set the time. And the whole shebang. I mean, this is not technically a very, very difficult watch to, to use. It's a very, very basic movement, but really well done. But when you're purchasing this watch, it's really all about that dial and that case shape. You know, from afar, you know, you know, it looks really, really sporty from afar because it looks like an RM. Clasp is signed Hublot. And as I said in the intro, I changed it to the factory rubber strap, which is actually way better. It goes well with the case, blends well with the case, and there's accents of blue on the side. And the clasp is a twin trigger release. It's kind of a weird thing because this is how you will adjust it. So you just take it off. It needs to fit on two holes. And then for me, when I wear this, because again, this is not my watch, and I'm just keeping it in storage, uh, I would have to wear it at this part and then that's already set for me. So it's nice click, nice clasp, nice strap as well. So wrist rule on a 6.5 inch wrist. And actually, I was very, very skeptical when I tried this the first time because you know, with the dimensions, it looks so huge and it sounded so thick. But since it's ceramic case and titanium parts and then on a rubber strap, it's very, very light and in spite of its being 14 millimeter thick, that short lug to lug that I was mentioning earlier, how it curves underneath the case, it really, really well is really good. And I was fairly surprised that it is such a comfortable wear. And I can, well, I have never tried an RM, but I can now fully understand why people try to lean towards that, this kind of shape, because I think you know, this kind of shape is getting much more popular now more than ever because of the rising prices of RM. So watch companies are just like slowly following this. And which is in fact kind of weird because it's actually, it's actually Frank Mueller who actually pioneered that watch case. Well, Richard Meal actually worked for Frank Mueller if I'm mistaken. All right, now for the pros. First pro, fit and finish, fantastic, you know? That dial is just absolutely gorgeous. I believe it's just well done. Um, I'm not a big fan of skeleton dials, but this one, they just like really pulled it off. The loom is actually really good as well. I mean, I watched the movie with this for two hours and I still had loom. Um, the fit, and how, how it's really comfortable, the lightness of it, the specs of it, it's very, very nice. Um, I can't say nothing really bad about that, those specs. So the cons for this piece for me would be the lack of quick release on the bracelet. You know, I, as I mentioned, I changed the bracelet. I had to go to the Hublot 80 or to the Hublot store itself for them to change the bracelet because you have to have the proper screwdriver just to, to get the bracelet off. And another con for me would be the clasp. You know, it's a nice clasp, don't get me wrong, but I think a quick fly micro adjust would be good. You know, um, they're, they're selling this to you for so much. So you would expect that these, that these big brands would actually engineer a nice clasp to fit or to commensurate for the price that they are asking. You know, um, I believe Formex, which is a micro brand, a Swiss micro brand, actually has a nice micro adjust, but I have never tried it. But yet, yeah, they're trying to do something innovative and for a fraction of the price. 
and even, as I said, that quick release for the bracelet. So those are my main cons. Usually, I, I would say I'm a big fan of no date complications, but I think the date actually fits well with the overall design. Uh, I think that's a talking piece, especially with that skeletonized date wheel that goes around the dial. So closing thoughts on this watch. This is actually a very, very good piece. You know, this is the first Hublot that I've ever handled, and I'm very surprised with the, the fit and finishing of it, how they engineered it. That dial is just really gorgeous. Um, it has a good movement at the back. It ticks all the right boxes, and, and if it were cheaper, I would have probably been swayed to buy one. So the question is, if I ever do have money to purchase one, will I buy it? No, it's a, it's a hard pass for me. This kind of money, I could have built an entire collection five times over, and I would have been happier five times over. So I think Hublot really reaches to a different market. It's not really for an enthusiast level. I think an Ublo, uh, when people buy an Hublot, they just like the brand, the brand name, the street cred that it carries, and how it appears on their wrist. Because at the very end of it, this is still way cheaper than an RM. And my brother did get this at retail, but uh, one would argue why not just buy a Rolex Daytona for that kind of money. And I can argue back that why would you pay a Rolex for a Rolex Daytona above retail? That's the biggest argument there. So at least, in a way, um, my brother, when he bought this, it's his only watch. So I guess it, it speaks in volumes as to what the market is, who the market is for, and how Ublo can actually has a space in this watch world. So there you are. So if you guys have any questions, please do ask in the comments below and see you on the next one.